Jeskai Ascendancy Combo, J-A-C for short. Key card here is Jeskai Ascendancy, which says whenever you cast a non-creature spell, creatures you control get plus one, plus one till end of turn. And then we get to untap those creatures. Whenever we cast a non-creature spell, we can draw a card and then discard a card. This combos in this deck with this card, Sylvan Awakening here. So this deck can combo kill as early as turn four. The basic idea is turn... Uh, actually, well, Sylvan Carry added, this build can combo kill as early as... No, it's still turn four, right? Yeah, so you turn three, play Jeskai Ascendancy. Turn four, you play your fourth land, play Sylvan Awakening, and then you cast a one mana spell to untap all your lands that then become three threes, and you sit there and cast through a bunch of spells as you go, making your lands bigger and untapping them and making more mana, and then eventually you attack with very large, very lethal lands. Notably, Sylvan Awakening here makes your lands indestructible too, so should your opponent have blockers in play for all your lands, eventually you can loot into Supreme Verdict, and Supreme Verdict to clear the board and then attack for lethal. Hey, thanks for the third of a year, Crost. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around, even if you're mostly on the replays. Um, this is a viewer-submitted list, like a lot of the lists that we play here. Um, I've not played with Sylvan Carry added before, so I'm interested to see how that goes. I think this Swamp plus Trophy Decay Duress in the sideboard is probably some hot nonsense. I'd be surprised if this is going to feel necessary, but hopefully we get to play against like Blue White Control. And I could see, could see these cards being good against blue-white. A little bit more flexible than just playing Fry to kill Narset. But we'll see. That'll be something I'm going to want to be thinking about. Oh, I didn't import the, the red deck. Make sure I have cards for that, too. I believe I picked up the cards for it. Yeah, we're good to go. So we're going to play red aggro after JAC. Let's incinerate another 10 tickets, shall we? Yep, yeah, I got most of the, I believe all the build around submissions that were in the deck queue as of yesterday afternoon are now built and have decks linked in the deck queue. It was part of the reason why I took yesterday off so I could get that everything I had in there prepared. This hand's fine. It has a couple of lands in it. It's got a Sylvan Awakening, so we're just like looking for some lands and a Jeskai Ascendancy here. How do you get the tickets for the events as a cut of the donation required for the deck or as out of pocket? So I mean you buy you buy tickets on Magic Online, but believe it or not, and this is a this is actually that's something not to not to toot my own horn, but I actually haven't bought moto tickets this year. Which if you think about the quality of some of the decks we play on this stream and like how frequently we just like take the tickets out back and incinerate them. I think that's pretty impressive. Probably lose dig through time here, I assume. Sylvan carry added looking very good here against uh, an aggressive deck full of two ones. Basically a removal spell that also accelerates us. Really? They took Is It Charm? That's interesting. Play another one of these. I'm going to go ahead and psych sack this now. I could hit a one drop. Sweet. Okay, hopefully we don't get Thought Seize this turn. So I'm going to go ahead and block with both because if their turn, this turn, is just paying three mana to kill my Sylvan carry added, I think that's a good exchange for us.
go. So we're looking for any two, one or two mana instant or sorcery next turn to get going. <clears throat> Assuming they don't have a thought seize. They do not. Oh, wait. The Sylvan Awakening untaps the carry added, right? And it gives me a loot, which lets me cast the dig. <clears throat> yeah, we should we should actually be good to go here. I mentioned I haven't played with carry added before, and carry added's proving very, very good this game, huh? Definitely a big part of why we're in this game. Uh, it might be right to play the land out. I don't know. It could go either way there. Yeah, the modern... So, Karyat, I've played the modern version a lot. And the modern version is very different just because it can kill with Sylvan Karyatted out of the sideboard is a big difference. So that's why that's why that build plays carry it in. Yeah, I think I think they're dead. Yeah, they should they should be dead here. I have to get my yeah they're they're dead right because I only have to cast one more spell here. Dig through, dig through time. I love to cast dig through time. Do, 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 dig through, dig through time. Be, be, do, 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 be, be, do, 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 do. Aren't they dead? Yeah, but then I have to, like chat. You know what the worst part about killing them is here? I have to stop drawing cards. Zikta, thanks for the 14 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Yeah, this deck, this deck's really good with the dump spells. For sure. And this was this was what a turn five kill. Had turn five kill through thought seize. Could have, could have overkilled for more, didn't need to. Did I forget to restart Moto? I feel like I forgot to restart Moto. I did. I'll have to do that after this match. All right, Clarion and Supreme Verdict both sound great here. Cyclonic Rift seems worse than those sweepers. To be fair, they thought she's the wrong card. Yeah, very likely. I think they should have taken Digger Awakening. Uh, this scene's not good enough, right? Like, it's got our colors of mana, but, like, double Aether Hub is awkward. A land that hurts us against the aggro deck is awkward, so then they play Catch and Release here. Uh, this scene's actually super reasonable. I think because I'm on Sylvan Carry I actually bought him this Deafening Clarion. I don't really, I don't really want to curve Carry Added into Clarion. Hey, what's going on, Jerry? I think this deck's great. There's a variation of this deck up on my website in the Pioneer section. I think this deck is reasonably competitive and a lot of fun. Dig through some of our options here. I expect we'll see some two-power creatures here since they took the Sylvan carry added away. 
They could also just have like more thought seizes. Come in for that at this point. So start by casting up the bottom. I guess that's pretty castable pretty soon, huh? I guess I'm keeping that. Do you not have internet on the cruise? Hub plus enchantment on hub. Because uh, I'm going to hub the breeding pool. We have to take some damage through the way we seek regardless of how we sequence our lands here. Okay. Yep. Taking another three here. Okay, it's a land that doesn't hurt us, which is nice. So, there is a world where we combo kill them next turn. We need to draw a one mana card and a... We need to draw a one mana card, and a one mana non-creature spell, and a Sylvan Awakening. And then Bridal Growth lets us float mana. I'm going to go ahead and float white here. So if I draw Supreme Verdict, it's castable. I'm going to go ahead and make green and cast this. I can cycle this into Deafening Clarion here. I have one copy of that in my deck. Oh, even, even Clarion doesn't do that right, because this is a 3-4 now. So, a little bit too slow that game. Opponent presented turn 5 lethal with some good disruption. We did not have any of our useful interaction. I think I'm happy with how I boarded. I'm just going to go ahead and run it back here. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out this morning, by the way. I hope everyone's having a good Saturday and a good end of your year. We are doing an end slash beginning of the year streamathon here. So I'm going to be live for 8 to 10 hours a day, every day for the next 7 days, doing starting with Pioneer every morning, and then rolling on into some Arena every afternoon. Mm, you're right, I did bottom Clarion from, from my mulligan at the start. So we were on the Zero Outer there once we missed the... On the Zero Outer once we missed drawing the other thing. Uh, Christy and the kids are in Chicago with my mother-in-law for the week. So we didn't we didn't go up there for Christmas. This was our first uh, our first Christmas in the new house, so we decided to stay home for that. So they're up visiting family for this week. I think I just take Fiery Impulse to help keep myself alive here. I want to kill their threat next turn. What was the hot kid toy this year? You know, my kids are just, they're just not very picky. We, when we took them to see Santa, they asked them what they wanted. And they were both just like, nothing in particular. They're just both, both happy with whatever. Um, I think the most popular thing of the things they ended up getting was, um, they got a, uh, Beyblade set, those battle top things. Je Declan likes to watch that show on Netflix. With uh, with an arena that you like, put them into to have them spin in battle. So we're having fun practicing learning how to work with those. Let it rip, exactly. Spawner had turn one thought sees all three games. Uh, close to it. I 
I just pass here? There's a chance they pump up Knight of the Ebon Legion. I get to get them with this Fiery Impulse. One Psycho Squirrel. Thanks for the five months. I appreciate it. Welcome back. King Ghidra. Thanks for the raid. Hope you had a good stream this morning. I have to get Collective Brutality here. Collective Brutality actually isn't the Stone Cold worst for us because um, I have both Dig and Sylvan Awakening here. So like, regardless of what they take, if they take my combo piece, Dig probably finds me another. Yeah, they're just taking Dig at this point, learning from their mistake in the first game. Yeah, yeah, we had them when I was a kid too. But yeah, definitely, definitely still a thing. Is that a good one, chat? What do you, what do you think of that one? Du, 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 du. We need to draw a non-creature spell. Want to combo kill. Do, 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 do. So looking for a one mana, not one or two mana non-creature spell. You were never a kid, you were born an angry old man. There's some truth to that. Dig through time is the best possible draw here. Are we dead? I guess they're technically not attacking for lethal. Yeah, do I just like shock in this temple garden and loot? I think I shock in the temple garden and loot, right? Just like hope to hit. I think that's the line. I'm basically dead anyways, just because like I can't use I can't use the, the mana confluence anymore. If I don't go off here, always the next card. Always, always the next card. It's close. Like I mentioned when we lost to the Black Aggro deck earlier today, the, uh, the Black Aggro deck is arguably one of the best decks in this format still. Smuggler's Copter was a very, very good ban. Yeah, I guess um, we technically weren't dead on board. We just, like, can't win the game anymore from that point. Yeah, they can't all be can't all be good days, go Kai Fire. That's still it's still early, right? We've only been live for like two and a half hours. Got another five hours to go. I think, I think we'll get on the scoreboard at some point with this one in this league, I would bet. And the Ed Red Aggro will probably be pretty good to wrap up the Pioneer segment with, and we've got some good standard decks today as well. Was Nexus of Fate a good ban? Nexus of Fate can eat dog crap and die in every format it's legal. Nexus of Fate is a rancid stain of a magic card that even when it's not too powerful, it generates miserable games of magic. Please shift delete that card from existence. Please, please shift delete that card and pretend it was never there. But, but how do you really, sorry, I should, I should start containing myself. Just so, just so there's no confusion on where my position is at here. So I think I'm actually going to hold on to opt here. Just so if I draw running land, I can awakening into combo on, on three. Opponent likely playing Possibility Storm. So any untapped land lets us likely combo next turn. Yeah, I guess that's fair. Wilderness Reclamation is probably more of the stain than Nexus. When you when you use Nexus in a really novel way, it's kind of a neat card. 
When Nexus gets used in a novel way, it's a neat card. Okay, we could die this turn. So, I'm going to start by casting Opt. <laughs> Woo! Nothing but that, chat. Nothing but that. Something, something, skill game. Something, something. Swish. Ask me, ask me what it's like sometime, chat. Ask me, ask me what it's like sometime. Listen. We play one Cyclonic Riff for a reason. Hashtag sometimes lucky. This is what I'm here for. It's called Hot Scholar. Thanks for the minis. <laughs> Maybe I'm supposed to kill Lannery rather than the elf. I guess Lannery technically makes a man every turn, huh? More of my ex's Bezo bucks because she still has it connected it. God bless Mezzi. Thanks for keeping me around. There's a good chance they possibility storm again next turn, right? So like... Am I supposed to Sylvan Awakening here and hope to hit a one-mana spell? If I Awakening into a one-mana spell, we kill them. I guess we don't even guaranteed kill them. Because, like, I'm only going to have four three-threes. I shouldn't have played that land. Should have done this first. Should have dug before playing the Temple Garden. Yep. So they get to put Peace Storm back into play this turn. We could we could die this turn, right? If they have uh, Love Struck Beast. Love Struck Beast is lethal. So the way their deck works is they put Possibility Storm into play, and then they use an Adventure Creature to cast Enter the Infinite to then put Borborygmos into play. So they have six mana total here so they can cast Possibility Storm and use Love Struck Beast. So they have both of those things we are dead here. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and actually because they didn't kill us here, we actually have two chances to hit Sylvan Awakening now. So if we find I think I'm in for a land. So the way possibility storm works for people that aren't familiar, when I cast my spell, I don't get the spell I'm casting. Yeah, so all of the cards my hand is a slot machine currently. So when I cast this 
I get a random, I get a random sorcery out of my deck. So I get another shot here. Need Sylvan Awakening. Woohoo! Lucky, lucky, lucky! Lucky, lucky, lucky! Yeah, and now and now each spell is two triggers. It is super true. I love the smell of Pioneer in the morning. Micah Mine, thank you for the 14 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. I told you we were gonna get on the scoreboard with this one. I actually think this archetype is quite good. Well, our lands are indestructible, so Supreme Verdict here, if we cast roll, roll into a Supreme Verdict, that's fine. How do we win? By attacking. Every time we cast a spell, all of our lands get 1-1 one, one bigger. Hey, Symbol, thanks for the support. I hey, appreciate it. Honestly, just sideboard cards and, and what's it called? Sideboard cards and shambling vent is probably reason enough. I love Dig. Yes, 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 I know they're dead. It's just really, whenever you kill your opponent with this deck, it's just incredibly sad because when you kill them, you have to stop drawing cards. And who, who wants to stop drawing cards, really? Hey, DeVargas, thank you for re-upping that Prime for the second month. I appreciate the continued support. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Good morning to you and yours. But to be fair, we would have guaranteed killed them if they didn't have Possibility Storm. But the fact that they had Peace Storm once we once we hit the Awakening was real, real useful. We have to spend our mana or we'll die for mana burn. Not quite. All right, so Disdainful Stroke is great here. Uh, Supreme Verdict sounds good against their fair creature plan. Piggy, you are currently subbed. It looks like you didn't pop a notification up. Sometimes you have to refresh your browser page, but you've got that icon next to your name. Let's you know in chat that you are currently subbed. I think I'm going to trim a couple of carry edits here. I'm bringing in an extra Supreme Verdict, and these don't really block block profitably against the opponent's deck. I'm just going to cut those, actually. Three of those. Two strokes and a verdict. Put in Tefri for their own possibility storm. Yeah, huh? I guess that works, doesn't it? I don't know. I don't know if that's good, though. Because, like, they have a lot of creatures, chat. So they do just get to, like, attack the Tefri. Like, this deck is frequently using its life total as a resource to what waiting till it goes off, which means they're going to be able to pressure my Planeswalker off the table most of the time. So, like, it's not, it's not a lock if they can just attack my Planeswalker for some damage. Is this a deck where you have to be relatively careful about boarding 
responsibly. Yeah, in in general, like I like I frequently said, if you're not certain whether or not you should be sideboarding something, less is more tends to be a good philosophy to to have. Uh, I think I'm gonna ditch planning and stroke here. We went to five. We can attune. We can attune for our first white source, then on bridal growth, give us a second white source. We'll plan to like hopefully lean on supreme verdict to get us through this game. If the opponent has a fast, um, a fast possibility storm, our hand's not going to be great. But they're more likely to just have a bunch of creatures than to have possibility storm. So I think I want to hedge them having creatures rather than hedge them having storm. Hey, happy birthday, Ninja Dave. Yeah, today is our first day of our end of year Hoglandia streamathon. So I'm going to be live every day for the next week for many hours each day. I did it for an entire year. But seriously, the only reason I'm on Twitch, money well spent. Thanks for keeping me around, Crazy Duck, and I appreciate the generous tier two, tier two sub at that. Is a year of tier two subs and Invisalign tray. It might be close. Is it? I have I have 29 trays. 3,500 divided by 29. Yeah, it's actually about 120 bucks. <laughs> Math. Math checks out. Chandra is real scary. That's a threat that my uh, Supreme Verdict doesn't deal with here. And I don't, I'm not really anywhere near, I'm not anywhere near comboing, which is unfortunate at the moment. Okay, sweet. That's that's the first piece towards potential com potentially comboing. Uh, I'm going to put this into play. I think I'm going to float white mana here and then sack the growth trying to draw ascendancy. Okay. Hopefully they don't uh they don't peace storm us next turn. If they don't P-Storm us and we draw a uh, a one mana, we can be good. Now, this is a post-board game, so I expect my opponent to have um, for Emory Reanimator. Sounds good. If we had a one mana, if they, if they don't destroy our thing and we had a one mana spell, we can Awakening and potentially combo next turn. That being said, we could just be dead here. If they have P-Storm plus Love Struck Beast, we do die. Yep. So I'll show you how the opponent's deck kills. So they cast Heart's Desire, which turns into Enter the Infinite, which then lets them draw their entire deck and put one card from their hand back on top of their deck. And they put Borborygmos Enraged on top of their deck here. And Borborygmos Enraged um, allows them to discard all of the lands that they've drawn in order to uh, deal three damage to us a bunch. So I'm not going to make them click through the triggers, but I wanted to show chat how their combo works. Um, if you think the opponent's deck is sweet, it is. Um, you can see me play their archetype on my YouTube channel and my website. I've got some videos of it up there. Uh, we are heading into game three of the second match. We died. We lost a close set to black aggro in the first one. Thanks for the 13 months. Alex Jet, I appreciate that. Welcome back. I'm going to keep this. Hopefully, they have a hand that Supreme Verdict is better against in the postboard games. Second Emery Cat point. Sounds great. I believe Emery Cat's going to be at the top of the standard queue after, after today, anyways. So, we'll likely be up on Monday. My plan for the week is to, we're going to do Pioneer on Moto every morning, and then Standard and Historic are going to rotate in the afternoons. So this afternoon will be Standard, or this afternoon is Standard, tomorrow will be Historic, and then Monday will be Standard again.
Yeah, I like I like the innovation of Supreme Verdict. Sylvan Carry Added was also very good in the Black Aggro matchup that we just played. That is an excellent draw. Haven't been watching as much lately, but I want to stop in and say thanks for producing some of the best magic content on Twitch for a running year. Thanks for the entire year of support. I appreciate that. Hope life's treating you well. Let's get you a sword for when you're here. I'm just going to mana confluence and put the growth on the confluence. And then I can ascendancy next turn without paying life. Seems ideal. I don't really need the growth for fixing. So once I get the ascendancy into play, we'll probably cycle the unbridled growth. Can't bump a deck for the same day. Want to know for the future. To cut a deck into the current day stream requires a large donation. So if you want to bump a deck already in the queue into today's stream, it requires a $50 donation. If you want to add a new deck that's not already in the queue into today's stream, it is a $100 donation. That's in large part due to the fact that I spend time the night before prepping my decks. So there's minimal downtime between decks. So if people, if people cut things in, it adds downtime to the stream. Because it means I have to make adjustments midstream. Always much cheaper than those two prices I just listed to wait your turn. That's a possibility, Storm. I assume it's easier to add Arena decks versus Moto decks. It is, but it does still, like, the quality of the decks is lower, too. Because if I cut, if I cut in an Arena deck, that means I didn't get a chance to, like, look through that deck the night before <sighs> um yeah drawing the rift is kind of awkward i think i'm going to start by sacking this and see what we do yeah timing timing the new mods out means i have to unban them and then mod them which is more typing I think I'm supposed to just go land pass here. Definitely worse neighbor. Thanks for the biddies. I appreciate the support. We'll get that added in tonight. I think I just pass. I have two copies of Disdainful Stroke in my deck right now. So the plan is if they have their card to combo us here. Will Cyclonic Rift in response hope to hit Disdainful Stroke and then stroke their thing? We're looking for sorceries that are cheap to cast so that way we can hopefully spin them into so we can hopefully spin them into um into copies of Sylvan Awakening. Any ideas about red white feather versus the possibility store matchup? I ideas meaning in what way? Like how to make it better? I'd, I'd assume the answer is just kill them quickly. You don't really have a lot of interaction. Okay, a tune is a great pickup here. Because it means that if if this a tune spins into a Sylvan Awakening, we can kill them next turn. Oh, um Eidolon is legal, right? Players can only cast one spell per turn. If you're already if you already on board, that one works. I 
the the white Eidolon. Why do I need to play the land? I'd rather I'd rather save the land to loot. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have plenty of mana. Like every every spell I cast triggers ascendancy twice at this point. So they should they should be very dead unless they have like a nature a nat natural slate that they uh that they didn't play out yet. So they have they have two blockers here, but like every time I cast a spell I'm getting one infinite mana and two, two double pumps. So I just have to get all of these to nine nines. Does this reset? If I cast this, does it reset my things, Judge? Judge! I think the answer is no. I think the answer is no. Let's find out. Even if it does, we're like far enough ahead that it doesn't matter. It does not. God bless. God, God bless us, everyone. All right. I'm going to cast Dig Through Time before we kill them, so I like casting the card Dig Through Time. And by that, I mean it's not actually Dig Through Time. It's a random different card. Oh, we hit Disdainful Stroke. That's funny. All right, 30 you. She, she, she. Ha, ha, ha. Shared summons was stuck in their hand. That's brutal. That's why. This is why they cast the Bone Crusher Giant. So normally they can turn Bone Crusher Giant into a combo kill with Peace Storm, but the shared summons that lets them do that was stuck in their hand. Pretty, pretty fortunate for us. Clearly we need to put Peace Storm in our deck, obviously. How are we doing today, folks? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good night to everybody wherever you're in the world. Thanks for hanging out here today. If you're a new viewer, my name is Jeff Hoagland. I stream magic full-time here on Twitch. I'm here 30, 40, sometimes even 50 hours a week doing a ton of constructed magic. We do Pioneer here on Magic Online and then Standard and Historic on Magic Arena. As always, love to give a shout out to my wonderful subs. I wouldn't be here day in and day out without their support. So thanks to all of them for keeping me employed. I'd also like to plug a couple of my wonderful sponsors here really quick. BCW Supplies are the only ones I trust to protect my paper trading cards using code Hoaglandia at bcwsupplies.com. You can save 10% on sleeves, binders, deck box, and all sorts of other fantastic Fantastic. Gaming accessories there with them. Cardsphere.com is a peer-to-peer -peer trading network that would love to help you turn your cards into other cards or to other players. There's no haggling, and they just take a 1% fee off the top. Inkedgaming.com would love to help you customize your gaming experience. They do custom play mats, mouse pads, binders, and bags, and you can get 12% off any of your orders there by using code Jeff12. And the Nerd Rage Gaming Championship Series is the non-rotating format paper tournament series that happens every single month in the Midwestern United States. They do Pioneer, Modern, and Legacy, and they're doing double 5K weekends every month in 2020. You can find their streaming events as well at twitch.tv forward slash NRG series. Look at that. Just in time to restart Moto and find a match. The perfect show lineup. Hoglandia Streamathon is my religion. Is JAC the solution to the win draw? We are, after nine matches, we are in fact finally on the scoreboard for today. It was bound to happen eventually, right? Suno Tam, thank you for the entire year of support. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. That seems okay. 
has has its mana situated, doesn't have a combo piece yet, but we've got uh, got some can trips here. Got some can trips here. We didn't do the veggie man. We'll fit him in later, I promise. You know, be plenty of streams for the veggie man later today. Having Aether Hub as our first land feels a lot less bad when we're casting a tune off it to start. All right, rematch against Black Aggro. Played this as our first matchup, and it was a real close one. There's one of our combo pieces. So let's just go ahead and cast Awakening, digging for that J Ascendancy at this point. Supreme Verdict, that's probably great here. Can help buy us some time while we try and find uh try and find ascendancy. Another hub, yep. Let's do this and grab a planes. Hmm. Maybe I was supposed to. Yeah, I think I was supposed to growth first. I could have gone growth and then not spent the extra energy. I have plenty of power, so it's probably not a big deal. Playing this deck, I never know which basics to get with the tune. Depending, I mean, the tip is based on the spells that you have to cast. They aren't really cut and dry. Always get these, never get these, like most things in Magic. The answer is it depends. Huh. Maybe I'm actually supposed to... Maybe I'm actually supposed to dig there as opposed to strategic planning to start. Well, I guess I can do both now. And then... So we've got eight more looks in Ascendancy here. We get to dig at their end of turn and then have a draw step. And if we hit an Ascendancy, we can combo in two. The Ballista combo deck fell on its face was was neither linear enough nor interactive enough to feel competitive in the matches that we played. The previous match we just played was the first match win we got today. It was it was rough. Okay, so we're going to lose the Ascendancy here. I think that's fine. Means we keep the Supreme Verdict. Although Verdict and Carry added together are a little bit of a non move Yeah, that's one piece of feedback I have on this list. The Carry added felt okay and Verdict seems okay. Playing both of them together doesn't seem very good though. Yeah, Fox, both of those, both of those are fine. Wait, they took Awakening? Are they casting another discard spell? They just misclick? Weird. Okay, deal. So, like, in this matchup, for example, like, I want Supreme Verdict and Clarion, but, like, those those are bad with Sylvan Carry added. So I feel like doing both of these is a little medium. We'll see how it goes, though, here. Confirm misclick? Yeah, probably. Hey, Tex Colorado. Thank you for the 35 months of support. It's an incredibly long time. Thanks for keeping me around. This hand's super reasonable. Turn two Sylvan Carry added. Kind of nice here. Probably grab planes with the Attune with the Aether since we already have our island and we need double, double white for Supreme Verdict. I don't think that's strictly true, Enya. 
I think a lot of the time Sylvan Kyriad is going to gum up the board. There's going to be plenty of times where you need to verdict to stay alive and you just like kind of lose value on the Kyriad in, like blocks a little bit. And then you verdict it away and you're like, have two for one yourself. Or two for whatever, whatever they've done to yourself. I shocked Dane rather than playing the Aether Hub, prioritizing having extra energy over having extra life, which may or may not be correct in this matchup. Turn burning worm coil engines. That that really seems like a lifetime ago. Gosh, even even Kiki Cord feels like a long time ago at this point, but. Gosh, remember when we registered Spellsetter Sprite and it didn't feel embarrassing? I, I remember. I remember, chat. All right. What are spells, baby? Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. Whoa, 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 I subbed for Modern, now I'm still here for everything else. Thanks for the 12 months, Clamster, I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Wrinkle feels dig too, that it does. So, I mean, I guess we're kind of hoping to draw... We're kind of hoping to draw a Supreme Verdict, huh? Or a way to get rid of this. Fiery Impulse would also be good. I guess I can dig into Impulse here. Um, I'm actually just not quick enough at this point, right? Like, I, I really needed a fiery impulse here to kill this, kill this wrinkle. We're taking... Four, they have three, they have a muta vault, so they can put us like six next turn. Plus they have scrap heap scrounger lurking in the bin. I guess I guess the line is like planning plus ascendancy. And I'm like hoping to planning into impulse still to maybe tread water. I need like impulse plus a carry added to maybe survive. Yeah, yeah, we're super dead. Let's see if we can take game three on the play. Happy with how we boarded, let's run it back. For both of them, perfect. Thanks for putting the links in the cheer, I appreciate it. Get that divvied up between them. Verdict. Verdict doesn't save me, Vulper. They have a bunch of creature lands and they have Scrap Peep Scrounger. Mana Confluence is our first land's a little bit brutal. I wonder if I'm supposed to mulligan because of that. I don't know if that's a feels magic man moment. I was just like, their deck was disruptive and had pressure and we died. Yeah, it felt like they had some disruption. They had some pressure. Like, we played a game. I like their taking of strategic planning there. Our hand doesn't do a lot without Ascendancy. 
Fair Impulse is a good pickup because it lets us uh, kill their next thing. It also puts a card in the bin for this dig through time. We're hoping to draw Jeskai Ascendancy or Cantrips into Jeskai Ascendancy at this point. If they deploy a threat here, I'm going to Fairy Impulse regardless of what it is just because I want to spend my mana. We tried blue red flash and pioneer gear. We've not, although it is it is in the deck queue. Coming on up. Playing the Temple Guard now lets them know a card that I don't have. Can I bump red white feather with this? You definitely can, Fox. And that's for uh, pi the pioneer red white feather that you just added, right? Alec, thank you for the 19 months. I appreciate that. And thanks for the nine months, Fox. Sounds great. I believe that will get it played tomorrow or Monday. We're gonna hammer through, hammer through the Pioneer queue real quick in the coming days. Three, uh, three to four a day keeps the doctor away. Bump his feather deck while do the John. Earn Master, thanks for the prime support. Welcome to Hoglandia. Hope you're having an excellent day wherever you are. To be fair, it's better value to bump a deck with your tier three sub than to add a deck. I'm all about giving you that sweet, sweet value. If you, if you add a deck with your tier three sub, it gets put into the queue with 30 points. If you bump a deck with your tier three sub, it bumps for 40. And if that sounds like a diabolical way to encourage people to give me more money, it definitely is. Is that is exactly correct? <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and impulse this one. We're gonna take three here. They gain a little bit of life. The life link doesn't really matter here. We're just like waiting on ascendancy or can trips. Outside of ascendancy, dig through time's probably our best draw. <laughs> Honestly, Dig Through Time might even be a better draw than Ascendancy just because, like, it sets up Ascendancy plus something else. Good chance we're just dead here. We needed to hit something in one of these turns. How about lands? What are spells? Baby, don't hurt me. Did they discard more spells than we actually cast this game? I think they might have. So they cast three discard spells. We cast... A tune, a tune, fiery impulse, so similar numbers. And like two of the spells we cast just found land, so you could argue that they were just lands and not spells, probably. We cast we cast one spell that wasn't lay the land this game. Okay, you know. Sure. I think, I think we're on the zero outer at this point. I don't know that we have a catch-up mechanic, but we'll take another draw or two. They get to animate Mutavault, crew the Harvester, attack for three, bring back Bloodsoak Champion. Uh, I do not do tier three subs as, as cuts mel melodic lyrics. That is not one that I do. How much can I bump a deck with all the exposure I pay you with? Well, with, um, with, uh, with shillings, shillings are kind of like letting you pay me an exposure, huh? Shillings, shillings are like exposure adjacent. All right, one, two, we're gonna rally back here and try and get our get our $10. Sounds good, Quinner. Please don't expose yourself to chat. People die from exposure, chat. Fish lamp clock, thanks for the 16 months, welcome back. Yeah, the board game shelves went up well. Definitely better than the sad pile in, in my living room where they had been for the better part of the last year. Yeah, seems super reasonable. 
some interaction, some cantrips, a couple of lands, a combo piece. Good, good mix of stuff here. Demir Guildgate. Okay. Am I about am I about to get lost in a maze? Is the is the one two bracket a maze? A maze of wonder and terror. What are shillings? Shillings are the channel currency. So there's a little ticker in the corner that are basically kind of like points that you acquire as you watch the stream. And the, the shillings can be spent to highlight messages or bump decks in the deck queue if you achieve lots of them. Or if you save a ton of them, you can become one of Hoaglandia's first shillionaires. Beverly Shills. That's where we want to be. Easy choice. I could hold up an is a charm here, but I think I'd rather just strategic planning again and get my bin filled up for dig. Probably don't need a Supreme Verdict in the Gates matchup. Shilling should be hoarded and never spent under any circumstances. Is the MGM Doom viable for a rerun? Um, I think before I take Abzan Doom again, Sal, I want to play, uh, there's a copy in the deck queue that's the Abzan Doom deck Splash Mayhem Devil. So I think, I think I want to play the build with Mayhem Devil before I decide if I want to play the straight Abzan version again. So I think the core of that archetype is good. There, there is not Earn Master. So I try to mouse over some of the cards that our opponents cast, but sometimes I forget. You can type exclamation point and then the card name in chat for the bot to look up the text, but one of the many reasons why Magic Online is very inaccessible to new players is because there's no overlay for it. Jin's a terrible influence. Jin, Jin keeps the shillings market stimulated. Makes he makes sure that plenty, plenty of people have plenty of shillings. Ghosted, thanks for the the three quarters of a year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. So we've Guild Summit here. Gonna draw them cards whenever these gates come into play. So their ramp spell also draws them two cards there. So, <sighs> admission briefings work in the side for discard heavy matchups. No, I don't think that's very useful in my experience. Generally speaking, if you have Jeskai Ascendancy in play, you're going to find Sylvan Awakening, even if you've already gone through one or two of them. I could have dug there and cast Ascendancy if I hit it, but I think doing that when they could have something like Ugin to, to get rid of it before I get to use it is not ideal. I think I'm just going to pass holding up charm slash dig here. Magic's fun. My favorite part about magic is how interactive it is. That's, that's my favorite part about Magic the Gathering. How often I feel like my cards get to interact with my opponent's cards. It's definitely not a game that has a lot of prison elements in it. Alright, so I'm definitely taking Ascendancy. Is it crazy to take a land here? 
Because if I take a land, I can get myself... I guess a tune is basically a land that's also a spell. Yeah, I'll just take those. I kind of want to get to a point where... Oh, the Ascendancy does win if they have nothing, right? Because casting this untaps this. I forgot that. Yeah, K Carry Ad has been real good. Carry, Carry Ad has been good in the games we've played so far. Being able, being able to combo from five has been reasonable. I don't know if I'm sold on these sweepers because they're, God bless America. They got me while I was auto-passing. They, re they realized I was auto-passing and they motoed me. That's fine. I'll just trigger my thing later. So I could have sacked this in response to them targeting it. Then they wouldn't have drawn a card. That's fine. If they have nothing here, they're very dead. I mean, to be fair, it's on me. I probably shouldn't press F6. I should press the one that allows me to respond to things still. But yeah, and in general, the system Arena has tends to be more forgiving. And it's set up in a way that makes it harder to make those mistakes that are common on Magic Online. So again... The way we win the game from here is we just cast through some spells. Every time we do so, it pumps up our lands and untaps them. So all my lands are up to five fives now. I think I just attack, right? What could... Is there any reason to make my things bigger? I don't know. Probably. There's probably cards I should play around. Can I play around Fog? How do I play around Fog? Playing around Fog involves... Casting this here. And then getting a second Is It Charm. Yeah, I'm pretty confident that impulse is supposed to be impulse, though. The third point of damage is super relevant in a lot of spots. Hey, look. There's a dig through time. Favorite historic deck on the website. I don't really have a historic deck I really love right now. They banned both the historic decks I was liking. They banned they banned Team Oko and they banned uh, they banned Yarok Field. Uh, I'd recommend being luckier, Suna Yummy. And I think I think you covered why it's just not feasible. The graveyard, the graveyard hate cards you can play in those colors just aren't good. What what graveyard decks are you losing to specifically? I 
Uh, we cast two is it charms because when we cast the first one, it untaps all of our lands. Holy crap, they had the fog. Holy crap, they had the fog. <laughs> oh, baby. Oh, baby. All right, if they have a third fog, we're dead. <laughs> oh, buddy. All right. Hats off to the chat members who are like, play around fog. Hats, hats off to the, maybe we should play around fog folks. You, you the real MVPs. I'm on board in the mentors. The, comp the incredible competitive advantage that is Twitch chat. They didn't cast Fog under Tefri because they got greedy. They wanted me to like blow my load and spend a bunch of resources and they wanted their Fog to counter my resources. So they definitely could have prevented themselves from dying that turn by being more conservative. But they wanted to try and get value out of their Fog basically. TZTFG, thank you for the entire year of support. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, go happy with this. Let's run it. They wanted to get value. Sure. Good morning, Niv. Went from Bronze 4 to Mythic over the past few days with Historic Grixis Control you ran a while back. Hey, that's awesome. Congrats. Are you betraying your username by not only playing Grixis, but coming in here and telling us you Grixis? I feel like, I feel like there's some tension between your username and what you're telling us. Two different rally decks and a cat oven deck. Wow, they lefted their sweepers against us. That's really weird. I guess it kills Sylvan Carry at him. The fact they left in sweepers makes Monastery Mentor less good. Two rally and a cat oven. Yeah, those aren't really archetypes that I would have on my list of things I'd be worried about. The only like real piece of graveyard hate you can play is Tormod's Crypt, but I think I'd rather just like hope to dodge or get lucky. And Rally, Rally should be a graveyard deck that you can beat by playing counter magic or using your counter magic appropriately. So I feel like Graveyard Hate's not the appropriate way to approach the Rally matchup. Yeah, D-Sphere takes Ascendancy off the table, but it doesn't take monk plus monk token off the table so my plan here is to like wait till turn four play mentor make a token right away grixis does dumpster esper x that is that is the god's honest truth All right, I played the only black card I boarded in, so I don't need a swamp. More blue mana sounds great.
Honest question, how does it do that? How does Grixis be Esper? Is that your question? Or something related to the Ascendancy deck that we're playing? Gargantuan, thank you for the 14 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. You'll cover for him. Plenty, plenty of Esper usernames in chat. It's a conspiracy, I tell you. The types of cards that Grixis control decks generally play frequently line up well into the types of answers that Esper has access to. Obviously, there's more nuance that goes into it than that, but that's the, the typical expectation. I will always stay true to my user. I assume you play Green Ramp in Pioneer Tron player. I I actually think the I actually think the Green Ramp deck in Pioneer is harder to interact with than Tron is in Modern. It's real obnoxious. That's wild. They have like Sphinx's Rev in their deck. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, if you haven't bought into Green Ramp yet, I would definitely recommend not buying Green Ramp cards till you see what they do with the Pioneer ban list. I would be I would be incredibly surprised if the Green Ramp deck as is in this format still is legal after the next ban list update. Deck is wildly obnoxious. All right, let's see if they have a payoff for this Wilderness Reclamation next turn. If they do, we're probably going to be in a lot of trouble. I guess they need a payoff plus a way to interact with Ascendancy. Well, of course, we also don't have a Sylvan Awakening, so we're pretty far away from combo killing them. Uh, I don't know what Jerry T wrote about. I'm talking about the... Um, I guess the answer is probably no. I'm talking about the, the Ugin Ulamog World Breaker deck that's been doing very well at all of the Magic Online events recently. Yeah, Eldrazi, Eldrazi Monsters Green Ramp is a good descriptor. All right, they didn't start floating mana. That's good for us. Another dig through time. Sure. That's what Jerry T wrote about. That, um, unless you misspoke earlier, the deck I'm referring to does not have any devotion elements in it. So if Jerry wrote about a devotion deck, that would be different than what I'm talking about. Okay, yeah, I don't, I don't, SCG stuff is all paywalled. Even, even when it wasn't paywalled, I didn't get a chance to read that much of it, but since, since they paywalled, it went from not reading a lot to reading zero. There's so much, there's so much good free content out there.
tap and untap gate you control, deal one damage to each opponent. That's adorable. Oh! That kills with Wilderness Reclamation pretty quickly. That's kind of funny. Gosh, maybe I should have played the Mentor last turn. Yeah, do we have to kill them next turn? I think you're right. Uh, I don't think Ugin is the problem. I think if I were to ban something from the ramp deck, it would be a Boreal Greaser or Ulamog. The, the cards that have cash triggers are the offensive cards. Gosh, I think we're dead here. I think we're dead here, right? I should have I should have played this last turn. If I would have played this out last turn, they'd die. But I can't I can't cast five spells this turn. I mean, like, the reason why I didn't keep carry. I think the people saying we should have kept carry at it are, like, using hindsight to make a decision. Like, the, the opponent's deck, like, didn't realistically have us under a clock. And they're way more likely to have answers than a way that just kills us in two turns. So, like, yeah, if I'm aware that, like, Crackling Perimeter is going to come off the top. And again, like, even if I'm aware Crackling Perimeter is going to come off the top, it doesn't It doesn't mean I'm supposed to keep Sylvan Carriated. It means I'm supposed to play Monastery Mentor. So I'm pretty confident that discarding Carriated was correct with the information that I had then and now. My decision to not put an extra clock on the table was incorrect. But I think, I think based on the information that we had, getting rid of carry added made a lot of sense. I also like, before we got rid of the carry added, I had what, like 10 looks to find a Sylvan Awakening? Which just ends the game. This seems pretty good. One of the one of the things that I found we were talking about SCG articles and paywalls. One of the things I found really interesting in the community in recent months is how many people were like vehemently against SCG paywalling all their articles while simultaneously similar people also supporting something that seems like a trend based on what I've seen on my Twitter is a lot of the SCG and tournament grinders are like paywalling any content they make behind a Patreon. And it's, it's weird to me that people like rail against SCG paywalling all their content, but are very pro other people paywalling content. Like it feels, and I get, I get that like it's a corporation versus like individuals, but like, sure. But like the organizations are supporting those individuals. No, I've, de I've definitely seen people that are anti-SCG paywalling and pro-grinders pro paywalling. Blue-white would be the other deck. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised they took something out of. The green, green ramp and um, the green ramp deck and the blue-white control are the two decks that I wouldn't be surprised if they, if they banned things from. What do they ban though? Three mana Tefri, cards offensive. Oh, I missed a mana, right?
I'm aware I missed Amanda there. Well, that's super awkward. And I could have I could have played another land out. I guess I was low enough on resources that I should have played another land out, huh? I'm going to lose now. Oh, I guess I also didn't need to float with this. Are we going to fumble through? I think we're going to fumble through. I tried really hard to lose this game with bad sequencing, but I think we're going to fumble through. Is this lethal? This is 15, 18. No, I'm too short, right? Oh, I have to spell pierce my own thing. Okay, so we lose to we lose to fog. We lose to fog. I was trying not to lose to fog. Oh, I should have paid for my spell pierce, right? I should have paid for my spell pierce. I have another ascendancy in play. Hopefully they're just dead. Yeah, I played I played that turn really badly. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a sign of a good, powerful deck. I played that turn really inoptimally, but my deck is just doing something that's objectively powerful. So my deck was like, it's okay, Jeff. I'm going to drag you kicking and screaming across the finish line. Yeah, we killed them. Killed them on turn four there. Worth worth noting that Sylvan Carry added was instrumental in that kill as well. I think I've definitely been a fan of Sylvan Curiated. I think I'm going to rethink the build on my site with that. The the sweepers have been kind of middling, and I haven't been happy with Supreme Verdict and Clarion. The sweepers. Sweepers are awkward with the mana creatures. And this had a, um, a tune we'd keep it, but I just can't keep this on seven. Okay, yep, this hand's great. It is, it is burrito match time. For those of you that are new to Magic Online, we refer to the match to potentially go 3-2 as a burrito match because the difference between going 3-2 and going 2-3 is approximately $7 or one Chipotle burrito worth of prizes. But Magic Online in no way, shape, or form represents online gambling. Definitely, definitely not that. There's $7 riding on this match. Definitely not gambling adjacent. Hey, thanks for the seven month slice. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Get a little bit of gross. We're just like looking for some lands here so we can cast these at the Ascendancy and the Awakening and get going. Pelt collector under pressure. Bum 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 butter dum boom. Looking for lands and one mana spells. Aether Hub doesn't hurt me. We'll take that one. Have we tried Paradise Druid? Um I just don't think Paradise Druid's a good enough card, Ashiok. I've not tried it, but like every card you put into your deck that doesn't trigger Ascendancy has a real cost. We're going to be dead real fast, huh? Really, really need to draw a, uh, a one mana non-creature spell next turn. If we draw one mana non-creature spell next turn, there's a good chance we kill them on four. And I have Unbridled Growth here to sacrifice to draw a card. But if we don't kill them on our turn four, it looks like they're going to kill us on their turn four. When Chipotle delivering lunch? Uh, I don't think Chipotle does delivery. I guess I could Grubhub it. I've got, I've actually got microwave stuff today. Christy and I made, um, made homemade, 
uh, Alfredo sauce the other night. So I've got some pasta in Tupperware that I'm going to heat up. It's not that the uh, the Defender, it's the O3. So the third point of toughness is very good. Part of the appeal of Sylvan Carry Added is difficult to interact with and blocks against aggressive decks. So I'm going to go ahead and make white mana here. So I can sack this. This way, if we draw a Supreme Verdict, we can cast it. Need a Supreme Verdict or a one mana creature, non-creature spell. Perfect. So we play Mana Confluence here. Cast Sylvan Awakening. That's not very good for us. We need to hit need to hit some more castable non-creature spells here, ideally. They actually have a free delivery deal going on for college football games. That's sick. Sir, I'm done at two. But I wanted to get that F6 value. Okay, that's sweet. So let's tap this for a red that doesn't hurt me. Let's tap this for a painful blue, and then mana confluences are done making mana. Actually, before I commit to making colors with these other ones, I should draw a card with this and see what we get. Fiery Impulse, A. Eh? How many spells do I have to cast? Just three, right? So they are, they're dead. Are we deterministic? Okay, um, aggro. This will give us this will give us one more chance to see how Clarion Verdict and Sylvan Carry Added feels. We definitely want both of those cards in this matchup. Let's give this a go. Bushwhacker, yeah, yeah. What's it called? Is Oh, gosh. I tweeted asking for opinions on Yang versus Bernie, and my mentions are just slaughtered. I'll have to read through those tonight. It'll give me something to do while I eat dinner. I think I keep this. Leading on Mana Confluence against an aggro deck kind of sucks, but it lets me cast three removal spells plus a verdict, so I think we just, like, be awkward four-color control here to start. After this, after this, uh, this last match in this uh, JAC League, we will take a short ad break. We're going to come back with one more Pioneer deck today. We had to cut the line for red aggro, so I'm going to play that to wrap things up. Wrap up the Pioneer section, then we're going to roll into some standard after. Plan is to do Pioneer every morning and some Arena every afternoon. And the Arena segments are going to rotate standard and historic each day. Right, let's impulse that one. This game kind of feels like a good example of why the sweepers seem a little bit awkward too. Like, I feel like in these aggressive matchups, I can just like spot remove them. It's like, I can't really afford to just like sit here and take a pounding on my life total. To like verdict on four, it's a little bit slow. I 
Yeah, definitely looking for especially standard and historic submissions. I think my schedule means I'm planning to do like 10 or so standard and historic decks this week. And I think I only have about half a dozen of each. If we don't get submissions, I'll find things myself to fill in. But if you all have sweet things you want to see, I'd definitely love to see them. Howdy, THX. Welcome, welcome. It's good. To, it's been a while since we've done a weekend stream. There's no major magic stuff going on this weekend, so good time to get some in. Uh, I don't recall what that list is, Crit yet. So if you have any submissions, I'd encourage you to send them through the form on the site, and I'll I'll send emails back to out tonight. When I say no GP, what I actually mean is no SCG. That's accurate. All right, untapped land. Untapped land. Untapped land. Okie doke. So this Hepshed Oasis actually kills us here, huh? Uh, Pioneer currently 25. It is 10 for standard and historic. I would probably guess that Pioneer is not going to be under 25 because it seems like the Pioneer queue is staying pretty full at 25. Like when I dropped it from 50 to 25, the queue ballooned back up to 20 decks almost instantly. So if we get to a point where I can't fill Pioneer submissions at 25, I'll drop it back down again. Capital something something capitalism. I think I'm keeping this again. I miss bolt snap bolt. Yeah, the last couple times we tried to bolt snap bolt, it was real rough, Niv. I'll I'll miss the idea of bolt snap bolting, but in practice actually doing it, I don't know that I'm gonna gonna miss how it actually works out. Good joke, you won't fill pioneer. Yeah, I, I I would I would bet we're probably gonna keep pioneer full at at twenty five. Also remember, if you're looking for a little bit extra value, if you think you're going to submit a Pioneer deck at 25, the tier three subs, which are 24 or 25 bucks a month, come with a Pioneer submission that gets 30 points. So get a little bit of value if you do that instead of regular sub plus donation. So looking to just draw lands here, right? Like we want to just like play Ascendancy and then play Sylvan Awakening. Have you thought about monetizing your schedule through the week? People pay more for more Pioneer time. I mean, when there's higher demand for Pioneer and there's more Pioneer decks in the queue, I do make more time for Pioneer. So I already kind of do that as is. That's true. Tier 3 subs do give you Golden Pew emotes, which are good clean value. I'm actually not going to impulse this because impulse is... My only one mana spell at the moment, so that could possibly get me comboing. We'll see. Um, there's a standard, there's a new set release in January. So usually around set releases, standard jumps up to the most popular format. I'm interested, interested to see what happens with that with Pioneer right now. Yikes. Where are my lands? All right, that, that's a painful land, but I think it's worth keeping here. I think I'm just passing at this point. Sounds good, Mikey. You'll probably get an email back late tonight. I'm gonna to be doing long streams, so the, I would probably won't respond to deck submissions till after I eat dinner in the evenings. Merry Christmas, Snorka. All 
All right, so good chance they die next turn. Hmm. I guess they could have... They could have a disenchant, right? They try and destroy my ascendancy. Yeah, this, this feels like disenchant, huh? Is it crazy to just play second ascendancy pass here? Maybe it's just land pass? I'm just gonna go land pass. Now let's, let's planning and try and line up a six land. Okay, yep, sure. They shocked in this land. So I feel, I feel like they're gonna try and destroy my ascendancy here. Um, for a large, a large off format donation, I'd be in for like, uh, I'd be in for a Legacy League, J-Man. I actually don't mind Legacy as a format. Although I haven't really played it since Oko took over. But yeah, if you wanted, if you wanted to make the $100 donation for a Legacy League, I'd be, I'd be okay fitting that in during this week. All right, so untapped land is what I wanted here. And the reason I wanted an untapped land... Perfect, J-Man. I appreciate that. And then you can even... Um, if it... Assuming it's one that I'm okay playing, um, you can even even pick which day it gets played. It'll, it'll be the first deck in the morning. So the six land here... Let's me do this and counter their disenchant like we thought they had, and then still combo this turn, which is perfect. Does Modern have a price? Maybe, depending on the deck. My typical, my typical off-format price is $100, Niv. I do, I do have one more Modern deck in the queue that I have to play that I agreed to play. So that's going to get played after the streamathon. Uh, this deck, um... I, I'm sold on Sylvan Carrianid after that league, I think. I think there's enough aggressive decks in the format, and even against non-aggressive decks, it just, like, generates enough mana in pinches that I think it's worth playing. Um, these Supreme Verdicts ended up feeling quite awkward. Not only were they expensive, but they... Only were they expensive, but they were extra awkward with my Sylvan Kyrieteds. Like, the matches where I wanted these sweepers and Kyrieteds were similar, and then there was awkward tension with them, with them killing each other. I like this JC deck only needs two to three spells to win. Modern feels like, yeah, yeah, the modern, the modern deck, this deck becomes deterministic much faster. As a busy husband and dad, I appreciate the favorite video section on your website. Thanks for the consistency. Thanks for the support. I appreciate it. Thanks for keeping me around. I think Solar Blaze, ooh, that's a cheeky idea. Yeah, I could I could see that being worth trying. I don't know that Solar Blaze is a card you want to main deck, but the idea of Blaze being a sweeper that doesn't kill Sylvan Carry added sounds potentially very appealing. I think I'm I'm gonna make a note to rework 
JEC list on website to include Caryatid, maybe Solar Blaze. But yeah, I think I think something close to this is probably reasonable. I'd probably turn these into some other cheaper cards down here. I'd have to look at like what the list on my website is doing to compare. I don't know exactly what I would make those offhand, but carry added definitely feels like it's worth playing. Verdict was awkward with carry added. I think carry added is the better card to have. Um, as far as the black splash goes, I don't know if this black splash is really is really worth it. Like, I feel like Mystic Dispute and Tefri is pro and Fry is probably enough to beat the blue-white decks. I would I would be surprised if, like, having a land in my board is worthwhile. It takes up a slot. Four, yeah, Dig is the best card in this deck. You should definitely play four digs. If, they, if I could play six digs in this deck, I think I would play six. It, it's possible that this deck wants a Treasure Cruise as a fifth Delve spell. Like, it's, it's that good and you're that good at putting cards in the bin. Mr. P, thank you for the 17 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. All right, we're on the upswing chat. When we get back, we're going to smork some people with this big, scary red deck. Thanks for hanging out today, folks. Don't go anywhere.